Do you have a hard time getting along with others? If so, this uh, passage I'm about to break down in the book I'm reading may be exactly what you've been asking for. Hey, Jason here. And if you've been watching the channel, you've been seeing me go around Johannesburg, showing you how beautiful of a place it is here, how safe it is here, and how wonderful the people are here also. And I've been talking to you about success, how to get it, what it means, and the three areas that I focus on, which is happiness, health, and wealth. And so <clears throat> the book I'm reading today is, well, I've been reading this book for a minute. It's uh, how, to maximize, how to Maximize Your Potential Through the Power of Your Subconscious Mind to develop self-confidence and self-esteem. And this is by Dr. Joseph Murphy. And so <clears throat> this is in chapter three, I believe. And the name of the, the title of the chapter is Love and the New Self-Image. And just to give you a breakdown of how this book works, uh, they actually have uh, case studies that he was doing on different, uh, different clients uh, through his research and uh, as he was teaching this to people. And so this is a lot of the stuff that was actually in his notes that have been consolidated into a book. So <clears throat> he starts out, I talked to a troubled young man whose aunt brought him in to visit me. It became obvious that he would had an overbearing mother who gave him no love or understanding. As far back as he could remember, she'd exacted his obedience by whipping, criticizing, and condemning him. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people may be able to relate to that because you know, we got to accept society for what it was like two, three generations ago. Like it was OK to just beat people. It was OK to just whip your kids, beat your kids. Um, they would look at more as property instead of as living human beings. So <clears throat> there's a lot of people who's going to relate to this passage right here. I know I have friends and family firsthand that could relate to this right here. <clears throat> and this is one of the reasons why I picked this passage to read out today. Then he goes on to say, <clears throat> excuse me. He was now 18 and said that he had a great difficulty. He had great difficulty getting along with anyone. His aunt had taken him into her loving, harmonious home, and he seemed to feel jealous of his cousins for having such affectionate parents. I explained to him that his present attitude was simply a defense mechanism that caused him to reject people who were kind and friendly, and that his problem was due to the traumatic experiences of his childhood. His dad had deserted his mom when she was a, when he was a baby and never visited or contacted his son. <clears throat> now, how many of us out here can relate to that? Not having a father present in your life. You know, I know I can. And I even understand the passage where he's saying, you know, he's saying how he, he seemed to feel jealous. You know, I used to feel jealous of people who grew up with a dad in their life because I was like, you know, why is it fair? The, all these other people have fathers in their lives, but then... I have to grow out, grow up without any male role model. So like, I understand where this passage is coming from right there deeply. <clears throat> and then he says, the young man began to understand that his mother undoubtedly hated herself because you must first hate yourself before you can reject anybody else. And that was, a, I highlighted this passage just so you could see it right there. And that's what I'm reading. Because let me read it again. You must first hate yourself before you can reject anybody else. And it's funny because I used to have so much hatred towards my biological dad, whoever he, even to this day, I don't know him, I've never met him. And I used to have so much hatred towards him where, you know, I, I used to be afraid if he ever would have came up to me, I probably would have killed him back then. Uh, just cause it was so much animosity. Cause I was just like, how can you leave a young black child in this world to just have to grow up and figure it out on his own. You know, all these milestones I had to cross, going to the military and then going to war, then getting married, you know, all of these things. Like even if you look at it most recently, the milestone of, you know, transitioning from married life to single life again because of the passing of CeCe, like all of these things where you could use a male figure to speak, to uh, speak to you. I didn't have that growing up as a kid. So like I had a lot of anger in my heart and it was directed towards him. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things that um, really started helping me get over that was, you know, just letting it go a lot of these things. And when I get through with the next uh, paragraph, it's going to kind of explain that. And then I'm going to go into more detail. She was projecting that animosity toward her ex-husband, son, and all those close to her. 
I explained that the cure for him was simple and that all he had to do was change his image of his mom because this was also the view he had of himself. <clears throat> now we're going to go into the technique that he used. He used this technique. He pictured his mother in his mind's eye as happy, joyous, peaceful, and loving. He imagined her smiling and hugging him, saying, I love you, and I am happy you came back. He could feel the warmth of the embrace and the kiss on his cheek. He vividly experienced this reunion in his mind. <clears throat> After six weeks, I heard from him again. He's back living with his mom and has been given a wonderful position with an electronics firm. He supplanted the destructive, hateful image of his mother with a positive, loving one. And he also transformed his own view of himself. It changed his life. Divine love entered into his heart and dissolved everything unlike itself. And so this is really deep because this is one of the things I'm... Um, Chantel and I, we were doing this for a long time, like just letting go of and clearing a lot of negative emotions that we knew we were holding on to, resentment towards people. Uh, like every, I think like every three months we were doing letters that burn letters that we would write down anything that we felt someone done wrong to us and then we would just burn them and let it go. And uh, what he's saying here is like, just start picturing people in a positive light. And you don't, it don't have to be directly your mother. Like, that's just this situation. Like, let's say if you don't get along with your siblings or maybe they bully you when you was younger, start picturing them in a positive light. Picture them being happy, coming up to you, being loving and embracing. Because when you start seeing people or visualizing them in your mind as being loving, and loving you're actually visualizing yourself as being more loving. Uh, one of the things that uh, Reverend Wright <clears throat> At, who's a who's a pastor and he t taught a lot of uh, thought science about how to think properly to start getting the blessings that we want in life he says you know <clears throat> let me see that right down here yeah here you go right here he said i will appear in the outer world as i appear to myself in my inner world and even when we're visualizing other people external people in our lives inside our head as being something more positive we're seeing ourselves as something as more positive because we can only see the goodness in other people if we start seeing the goodness in ourselves and that's just a quick hack to really start changing the way others view you in the world and also how you view yourself compared to others and it's something that i practice on a daily basis because uh, look i'm gonna be real with you like there's always times that you know a negative thought can come in bad thoughts come in like, no one's saying you need to be perfect. What I'm saying is being more consistent and thinking positive is a hell of a lot better than the way you're thinking right now. So I hope you got some value from this. If you want to pick up this book, the title again is How to Maximize Your Potential Through the Power of Your Subconscious Mind to Develop Self-Confidence and Self-Esteem. And this is by Dr. Joseph Murphy. If you're in South Africa, in Johannesburg, I did pick this up at... Rosebank Mall. There's a bookstore in there, and that's why I picked this up. And so, hope you got some value from this. Hit the like button. Share it with anyone who might like this type of content, and I'll see you tomorrow.